for the legs of the vertical shelf, I'm going to use some scrap. I want to try to get as, get rid of as much scrap as possible. So I think one can fit right here. Probably put this one on the machine first. It may take a little more time to get all this stuff uh, fabricated or the four legs, but I think it's uh, useful for me to at least try to get rid of some of the scrap. There's really no need to cut this thing off. Um, I was, I'm, I'm laying it on a sort of a, a, a flat portion right there. And I can use a lot of these lines that I have inside of the uh, spoil board to, to line it up. So, and then I can make my zero somewhere around here. I'm using a torque screw. I will never use a Phillips screw um, ever again in my life unless I really have to. And if they're machine screws, because I can use a, a larger bit. But this is a really small Torx uh, screw, screw head at least. It's probably like a number six, maybe a number five. And uh, these do wear out, by the way. I've, I reuse these all the time, so I've probably used these hundreds of times. And they do eventually wear out. But they seem to work for me and uh, the heads are really small so um, it's it's not going to interfere with the machining i would love to get the plastic staples though and use those instead of these screws i might do that later have my previous one in here and this is this is the one I have already created or fabricated so I'm going to load in the the other one the legs oh here it is okay so I need this is already at 110 inches the the gantry is at least so I'm going to move that this Bluetooth keyboard I use this so I can step away this is kind of like um, having a what do you call it an MPG or a pendant and I can just use these um, four arrow keys or the page up page down it's really easy to use I have the machine going at 20% of the speed when I just use the arrow keys. If I use the shift arrow key, then it will go at 100% of the speed. So I'm going to locate the zero and zero that I would like it to start. good. Now I'm going to use the page down and page up to move the, the bit, the end mill down to the surface. Let's see if I can do this while I'm filming here. I'm not really sure if I can Let's see if it'll rest here. Oh, it seems to stay. Let's try it. Okay, it doesn't move anymore, and I know that that's at the top of the of the workpiece. So, and I could use a a plate, and it will just hit the plate, and I can offset it by the thickness of the plate. Uh, but I, I personally like it this way, I like doing it this way. You can also use, use a sheet of paper and keep moving the paper while you go down, and uh, and that would be also another good way to to um, locate the the end mill on the top of the work surface. Now that I've positioned the end mill to the 000x 
which is going this way, zero Y, which is going this way, and zeroing the Z on the top, on the surface of the work workpiece. I can go ahead and go into my mock mock three and if I can find my mouse zero x zero y and zero z and what I usually do is I press the page up just to lift it up a little bit okay so now I can regenerate the toolpath so I can see the entire piece you can see that the See if I can get this pretty close. Um, the location of the end mill essentially is is at the bottom corner of this of this leg. So should be able to um, route it well on that strip that I have. So let's try it out. I noticed something loose on my on my machine when it was going up and down. This seemed to have been going sideways or um, rotating from here. So it looks like I have to um, tighten up these screws. So I'm going to do that before I make my next make my next run. I'm going to have to screw this in a very tight place. So I'm going to use a an angle ratcheting um, I guess bit screwdriver to do this looks like I may have to use something else on this one maybe I'll change that to a bolt hear that noise that's actually from the motor that's what happens when you have a a servo instead of a stepper motor they make funny noises I don't know how I'm gonna do that one so I might have to figure another method for that I don't want to take it off so I'll probably take care of that a little bit later right now it's it's pretty good This time I'm going to use the Ref All Home and this will take the gantry and this limit switch will hit this uh, bump right here and then this limit switch here will hit this bump allowing the end mill to be zeroed 
somewhere in this location. I'm going to first move it a little bit over here because it starts on the y-axis and I don't want it to hit anything. Okay, so I'm going to press the ref all home. You can see that it it goes fast first and then because it was going fast it, it's not as accurate so then it takes another swing at it and it goes a lot slower so it can be more precise you can even go slower than that if you need to you have total control of how fast it goes on the first run and the second run and also how far it pulls off now the only thing i need to do is set the end mill to the surface of this workpiece and then I'll be set to go. I'm going to be able to fit uh, actually two of the legs on this one. Since the legs were only about 38 or 37 um, in inches long, so I'm going to be uh, cutting it out as you can see right here. And then it'll cut another one out or I will reset it in another position just to the right of the of the first one. This is my last leg to make, so I'm just gonna put in another sheet. I couldn't find any uh, more strips, so I just used whatever I could find. Now they're all cut out, I can go ahead and clean up the pieces. MDO is such a nice material. I love using it. The only problem with MDO is it has voids in it. It's not um, a grade of plywood that they uh, fill in the voids. But it's not a big deal because uh, if I find a lot of voids in it, you can see one right there actually. Uh, the, the actual, what I'm doing right now is just taking off a little bit of the uh, fuzz on the, on the corners, on the edges. Um, and you'll notice that uh, you'll have more and more fuzz build up the more the end mill is worn. You can see another little void there. Uh, the fuzz is really, really easy to get off, uh, to remove from the, um, from the MDO. I just use a, uh, one of my gloves to do it um, pretty easy. You can even use your fingers, but um, sometimes you could cut your fingers because the edges are so sharp. And you'll also notice that there's more fuzz on one side than there is on the other. And that's because um, the end mill, um, it is an upcut end mill and the end mill will leave the worst corners, or the worst edge on the top where the uh, chips are being ejected vertically. The piece of furniture that I'm moving around is um, one part of a workbench that I'm working on that uh, can do a, it can rotate so uh, I can access other machines in the same, in the same uh, location since I have such a small area to work in. And I also use it for my um, router table. but. Uh, you could see that I was uh, having a little bit of a struggle uh, moving it. Uh, that's because I'm using the... Uh, well, first, my, my floor is not the smoothest floor. I have this vinyl covering uh, that has a, a diamond plate um, uh, pattern on it. And that, you know, it's an anti-slip pattern. So uh, it, it serves its purpose. And... I'm using uh, rel relatively small uh, casters. These are the casters you, you can apply on the side of the, of the piece of furniture and then um, step down on it to raise the, raise the table onto the caster and then you can flip it back up and uh, let it sit down on the floor. 
and it's it doesn't do it doesn't roll very well actually on this particular surface. It might wor roll better on uh, on a surface that uh, is more smooth. And right now, I'm I'm putting in the edge holes for the cross dowels, and I'm using actually this is an old um, uh, piece of equipment that I made uh, quite a while ago. Actually, one of my students made this. I didn't make it. And uh, he made it for me because he was um, I he was helping me out in the shop um, early on back in 2000 I think 2010, and uh, he made this device for me and it works out really well. Uh, you just it it clamps down on the on the um, wood when you turn a screw. Uh, one of these days I'll probably make another one because this one is a little bit. Uh, you know, it doesn't clamp down as well as I'd like to, and it also doesn't create a hole perfectly in the center or the midpoint of the width of the um, plywood. But you can see those long uh, grooves in it. That is what I use to align um, the cross dowel hole. And, you know, when I was designing this, I probably shouldn't have. Well, I was designing it so I could have a flat, a flat face, uh, but it makes it harder to to drill because of because of those insets. This is how the connection is made. You can see where the cross dial is, um, intersecting where the screw is on the top. Uh, I like mechanical connections. Uh, you know, it for me it. Um, uh, using uh, brad nails or nails and glue. Uh, I like to take things apart um, if I don't need it anymore and I can uh, store it somewhere if I if I need to. Uh, so I, I always like making everything with machine screws, um, a mechanical a mechanical type uh, joints and and fastening. Looks like I didn't align the hole very well on that one. The um, because those pieces are inset, it's hard to align those holes. And I usually use some other device, like a, um, a small uh, cylinder, to align the um, the cross tail hole with the cross tail hole jig that I use. But uh, in this case, I couldn't do it because it's so the cross tail hole was so far away from the the jig, and I could only use it. I could only eye it. But for the most part, it worked well. I think there was only two um, times that I had to do this where I had to drill it using the existing hole that was in the in the leg. You can see how well they're going together. And uh, I kind of learned during this uh, little process that I'm doing here how to put it together a little bit more efficiently. Uh, since I had so many of them to do, I started to think about ways I could put this together faster. Here's the finished product. I think I still need to do one more thing because I have a pro I, I have an idea that if I start putting uh, rods and things in there, it's going to go all the way to the floor, and then if there's any weight on one side, it's just going to fall like this, and all the rods are going to fall out. So I probably need to put something uh, like a base on the bottom. I may just cut something, cut cut a scrap piece out. So I'll probably do that, but it looks really good. I'm really impressed by this. You can see that it goes all the way down. All right, so I'm gonna put the bottom piece on and start putting the, the items in. I really have no idea if this will serve to be practical or not, but it was still a good exercise in using the CNC machine. And hopefully it helped you guys learn a little bit more about um, the process of using uh, CAD and then CAM and then uh, cutting it out on the CNC machine. 
Uh, I'll probably do the base, uh, create the base in a um, another complete, completely, totally different video, and uh, just use, do that as a quick uh, exercise, and because it's just going to be a rectangle, and it'll be a, something quick to show the entire process, maybe in just one video, uh, one little quick video. Okay, well that is this particular variant, which is AutoCAD to CamBam to cutting it out, cutting everything out on the CNC machine. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.